do steroid injections work for plantar fasciitis? Steroid injections are one of the most common treatment options for plantar fasciitis and are also one of the most common, uh, uh, one of the most researched uh, treatment options as well. So there's been lots of research over the past 40 years looking at the effectiveness of uh, steroid injections for the treatment of plantar fasciitis. So in this short video, what I want to um, tell you is um, a very give you a very brief summary of um, the effectiveness of steroids, so what you can expect from them, uh, and what some of the limitations and risks, risks are uh, involved with steroid injections. So a steroid is a very potent anti-inflammatory. So um, if you think about um, ibuprofen, which you can take orally as a medication, so ibuprofen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So we take this usually if we've got some form of pain, so it might be a temporary bit of shoulder pain or a bit of a headache or any other um, condition which can be uh, caused by inflammation. So the ibuprofen works by dampening down the inflammatory process and this then helps with um, pain. So a steroid is a, a much more potent form of anti-inflammatory drug and the steroid is administered via an injection. So the injection is, is administered directly to or around the plantar fascia. So because it's very, very localized to the, the injured tissue, the anti-inflammatory effects are, are very, very potent. So sometimes people will get benefit from a steroid injection. In fact, most people will get a benefit from a steroid injection um, within the first three months after receiving a steroid injection. So the success rate within this time frame is around about approximately 60 to 70 percent according to research on average. So some research will demonstrate a slightly higher benefit and other research demonstrates a slightly lower benefit. But on average, it tends to fall around this area. So it means roughly if, if 10 people have a steroid injection, seven of those people are going to be feeling better within the first three months of treatment. However, one of the downfalls of a steroid injection is that the effects of the steroid start to wear off over time. And research demonstrates that when reviewing the effectiveness of a steroid over longer periods of time, so at six months and 12 months after the injection, the recurrence rate is actually quite high, meaning that the plantar fascia symptoms start to come back. So having a steroid injection is not the, the magic bullet that's going to fix the problem. Um, and one of the reasons I think for this is that a steroid injection doesn't address the underlying cause of the problem in the first place. It merely masks the symptoms and any inflammation involved with the condition, which sometimes there is a, there is a lack of inflammation involved anyway. And this can be one of the reasons why a steroid doesn't work for, for somebody, even in the short term. Uh, but it doesn't address the cause of the problem. So if the cause of the problem is down to excess body weight or having tight cuff muscles or having flat feet or poor footwear or standing on your feet excess for excessive periods of time on hard surfaces, then a steroid isn't going to change any of these scenarios. So whilst it might help in the short term, if these other factors haven't been addressed, then the risk of recurrence is, is quite high. So a steroid can be a helpful treatment option but it should be used as an adjunct if it's going to be used. So an adjunct means that it, it should be used with other treatments, such as uh, orthotics, which are insoles to support the arches of your feet, if this has been deemed to be the main cause, causative factor as to why you've got the problem in the first place. Or it might be tight calf muscles, so you might be needing to do some stretching exercises in addition to receiving a steroid injection. So by addressing the causes, we're, we're trying to get long-term treatment success. So the steroid might help with acute pain and reduce your overall pain intensity. So that can be very helpful for the short term. Um, but if you're also doing other treatments alongside that, which are going to help in the long term by addressing the underlying cause, then that's going to lead to overall a much, much better outcome. Another thing to um, mention is, is risk involved with steroid injections. Generally speaking, they're safe for most people to have, and, and anyone who's going to inject a steroid into a patient will usually do a screening process to make sure that the injection is safe and suitable. But even when these steps are, are put into, into practice, that doesn't mean it's still risk-free. So uh, one of the risks with steroid injections is that it can cause fat pad atrophy. So on the bottom of the heel, we've got this fat, juicy fat pad, and this helps um, 
This helps um, with load distribution when we're standing and when we're walking, and it's quite an important part of our anatomy. And what has been shown by research is that thinning of the fat pad is correlated with plantar heel pain. So that suggests that if the fat pad becomes thinner, which it naturally does with age, then this can increase one's risk of getting pain on the bottom of the heel. So if we're receiving steroid injections into the bottom of the heel, which can thin the fat pad, then this can happen very earlier on. So you, we don't need to wait to to your older for this to start to happen. This can happen, uh, you know, after receiving a steroid injection. Generally, it, the the incidence of heel fat pad atrophy, so thinning of the fat pad after just one injection, is quite low. But with increased injections, it comes comes increased risk. Another significant risk is rupture. So this is where the plantar fascia completely tears. So steroids have been demonstrated to weaken certain soft tissues. Uh, an example of this would be the Achilles tendon. So there's a very high rupture risk of the Achilles tendon if, if treated with a steroid injection. So it's generally not done anymore. It's something which is, was more common practice many years ago. But what we've learned as medicine has evolved is that actually it's not a very safe treatment option. and There are better alternatives. And it's the same can be said for steroid injections for the plantar fascia, is that it can it can thin the plantar fascia and it can weaken it and it can lead to uh, to rupture. So there is a rupture risk to consider if you're going to have a steroid injection. Generally, the rupture risk is relatively low, but nonetheless, it is still a risk to consider. Infection is another risk, but the infection rate is also very low. So it's 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 the same as receiving an injection in any other part of the body to get the injection into the body you have to pierce the skin and that can lead as a portal of entry for infection to get in so whilst infection is a risk factor it is relatively low there are some additional risks with steroids which can apply to the uh, individual person regarding their medical history so i'm not going to go through every single risk but i've just highlighted some of the key risks involved so in summary Steroid injections have been shown to help in the short term for the majority of people, but the limitations of a steroid is that they often aren't helpful in the long term for the majority of people. So they'll, they'll help most people with short term pain management, but in the long term, the recurrence is incredibly high if the treatment plan is purely based on a steroid injection. I hope you found this information uh, informative and helpful. If you'd like to check out other free resources, please go to the website www.thehillpainexpert.com. Thanks for watching.